Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm watching this after a very pleasant morning indeed, uh, where I met up with some friends of mine from university all those years ago. So quick shout out to Brian, John and Will. I very much enjoyed your company this morning on the golf course. Um, but now we're, I need to get into Sudoku land, don't I? Because today I've got what I suspect will be quite a tricky puzzle. It's called the pipe and it's by Lizzie O1. Now Lizzie O1 is a very, very clever person. I know this because I've tried her puzzles before and they are always very, well, they're, they're always super interesting, but also stretching. I think this has got four stars out of five for Logic on Logic Masters Germany, which isn't quite as difficult as I feared it might be. But uh, you'll be able to judge from me whether I've had a torrid time with it by looking at the length of the videos. Quite straightforward rules today. Um, but before before I read you those rules, let's talk about some stuff going on around the channel. 10 o'clock this morning, we released a bonus video. Uh, Mark and I both attempting uh, to solve a cryptic crossword, the same cryptic crossword. So uh, one of those rare occasions where we get to solve a puzzle together. It was a lot of fun and it was to commemorate uh, Puzzler Media, uh, which is a big UK puzzle company, uh, reaching their 50th anniversary. So do check out that video. We think those, of, well, especially those of you who like cryptic crosswords should enjoy it, we hope. Um, then what's next? Um, our Patriot is Patron Reward Day. It's the 1st of September. So um, yeah, do check that out. Four o'clock this afternoon, the reward went live um, and we've already had several correct entries, <laughs> unsurprisingly. Um, and it's not it's not as easy as last last month's, but it's not, it's not too difficult either. So if you are new to Variant Sudoku, do have a go at that. You should enjoy it. And I need also to read out the winner of last month's competition. So very well done to John Lorenz. John, you have won, and I will be in touch shortly with a Bubba is you key for you. Um, congratulations. Um, then our fight, we've got this special uh, app that's come out. It's completely free. You can download it on all uh, normal app platforms. And basically it's to say thank you to everybody who watches the channel for helping us to reach 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. We're, we're thrilled about that. And the way we're saying thank you is releasing this app. Um, 23 puzzles by some of the great and the good of the Sudoku community. And I've had a couple of emails from people who've actually finished all the puzzles already, which is a very good effort. And, and the feedback has just been incredible. Um, so um, I, I'm not surprised by that. The puzzles are wonderful. So download your free app and do do give yourself some pleasure by having a go at the 500,000 free pack. Um, now, what else do I need to do? Oh, I need to do some birthdays, don't I? So very, very happy birthday to Kyrie, who turns eight today. Um, and Akairi, it's brilliant that you like watching Crack in the Cryptic. Um, I hope you like this video very much and I hope you've had a brilliant birthday today. Um, Jonathan and Rachel celebrate their 10th wedding anniversary today. So congratulations to them. That is also a great excuse for cake. Um, I've got a couple of late birthdays I need to do, which happened during my uh, during my holiday recently. So Carianna from your husband, Anthony, very good get, very good name, Anthony. Uh, I think that was the 18th of August, and I'm not sure of the date of the next one, but Sylvia from from Luca, um, uh, yeah, and yeah, sorry, I don't know the date of that one, but Sylvia, I hope you had a great day. And then today as well, it's Leah's birthday, and your boyfriend Errol um, told us that. And Leah, I hope you have had an absolutely brilliant day. Of course, um, that's all the news. I'm looking at my list. I think it is all the news. So now I get to try the pipe. I guess that's called the pipe because that thing looks to me like a pipe. Can I see anything other, any other reason? No, I can't see any other reason. So let me read you the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, each purple line contains a set of non-repeating consecutive digits, which can appear in any order. So let's imagine we worked out this cell here was a, oh, I was, <laughs> I was gonna say, let's imagine that cell was a one, which would be a very silly thing to say. Let's imagine it's a nine. If it's a nine, then this line, because it must contain consecutive digits, must have a seven, eight, and a nine on it. And we can put those in any order we like. So that's how purple lines work. And then the next rule is that adjacent digits along a green line must differ by at least five. So sometimes this is called a German whispers constraint. I'm not sure why, I think perhaps it was invented by 
a German constructor. Um, but let's look at this cell then. Let's make this cell a three. If this was a three, this cell here would have to be at least five different from three. So it would have to be either eight or nine. And that's how German whispers work. So do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, maybe I should start with my two secrets about German whisper lines. Um, because there are two secrets about whisper lines that sometimes people don't know if you're new to the constraint. And the first secret about a German whispers line is that it can never have a five on it. And that's because if you try and put five on it, the next digit becomes problematic uh, because it has to be five away from five at least. So it's either going to be 10 or higher or zero or lower. And they aren't valid Sudoku digits. So there is no five on a German whispers line. And that leads to an interesting sort of property of these lines. They oscillate um, up and down around a five. So what I mean by that is let's imagine this was a low digit, a one, two, three or four. What's this digit? Well, even if this was one, and even if it was this digit was only five away from one, then it would still have to be the other side of five from one, two, three, and four. It has to be a six, seven, eight, or nine. Then this digit flips back the other way again. A five different from six, seven, eight, or nine is always the other side of five. So you can see that what happens along these green lines is that they, they oscillate up and down. And that can be very useful, a very useful thing to know. Um, so I think what we probably ought to do is to study these long green lines here. And let's label them up a little bit. So obviously I don't know at this point whether yellow is a high number or a low number. But I do know that the this is the way this line oscillates. Um, and then this line also is going to oscillate. So let's take the alternative digits along or alternate digits along that line. I'll use a different color now so I don't get confused by this. Uh, I don't think that there's sort of a similar uh, uh, correspondence between, you know, yellow and blue digits on this. And if I'd labeled this with yellow and blue digits, that might they might not mean the same thing. Um, so we'll go with Oh, that's a horrible color. I'm not going with purple on that green line. I will go with red. Yeah, I can see that. That's great. OK, so what do we now know? So we've got two highs and two lows in this little two by two and two highs and two lows on this little two by two. We've got. Hmm, no, I'm not seeing much else, actually. Let's just look at this one. This one, the only question that's sort of jumping out at me here is where does five go in column one because five in column one obviously can't be on the green line so it's got to be in one of those two cells um, now the other thing I might think about though in the context of column one is fours and sixes Fours and sixes are the next most difficult digits after five to put on a green line because a four and a six can only be next to one other digit. So if you made that digit a four, you could make this digit a nine, but you could only make it a nine because any other digit that's more than five away is obviously 10 or higher. Um, so, for, yeah, so you can see, for example, that digit cannot be four for that reason, because that's going to be flanked by nine. In fact, ah, no, bobbins. Uh, that's annoying. So th let me think about this. This digit can be four, can't it? Because then we would put nines in both of those cells. And these nines don't see each other by the medium of Sudoku. So that sort of works. So actually, maybe there isn't such a great restriction in this column. So this digit, no, it doesn't work as well with that digit. That digit can't be four because those would both be nine. That can't be four. That can't be four. That can't be four because both of those would be nine. So actually... 
the four and the six in this column is with the six it's going to work the same way they can go in this square they can go in this square so that's one two three they've got four possible positions that's useless bobbins um hmm okay so what do we do now I haven't got a clue <laughs> um, five in this box has to be in ah right here's something wow okay there is a very strange pattern going on here I think so the way I'm seeing this pattern is where does five go well no let me ask a different question yeah this is very interesting how many fives do we think there are going to be in box five in this finished puzzle hopefully your answer to that is one there's going to be one five in here and there's going to be one five in here but those fives obviously can't go on the green line now I could put one five in column four that's true but the other five is going to have to given I can only put one five in column four the other of the two fives that must appear in these boxes is either going to have to be in that domino or that domino and that's interesting remembering where five is going in this column which is in one of those two cells so in fact what we can say now is there must be a five in this column in one of these cells because if there wasn't the two five if there was no five in that string of digits there would be a five here and a five here and no five would be possible in column one but this is also a sort of virtual x-wing isn't it because because let's imagine there was a five in this domino then then the five in column one would be here and you couldn't put a five in any of those cells Whereas if the five is down here, uh, or the second five after the five that must appear in these cells, if it was here, then this will be a five and you can't put fives in any of those cells. So what we can conclude from this is because there is either a five in this domino or here, and there is either a five in this domino or here, you can never put five in this puzzle oh this remban might be the place we need to look there is no five in any of those cells there that i've just highlighted in orange which was probably a terrible color choice let me just think about this for a second or two um Hang on, so we can get rid of orange. There must be a five in one of those four cells. Ah, ah, it's this, it's not this one, it's this one. It's this one, because, be because of this pattern, um, well, in fact, importantly, because there is a five in this string of digits, there's no five on the top of this Renban and there's no five in this purple cell here. Sometimes these purple cells, are, purple lines are called Renbans. I realize it doesn't say that in the instructions, but they are. So if there's no five on a four cell Renban, what's this Renban made up of? Well, it's either going to be one, two, three, four, or it's going to be six, seven, eight, nine, but it's very, it's extreme in nature. So that must mean what? This is either one, two, three, four, or six, seven, eight, nine. And that digit, whatever this was, imagine this was six, seven, eight, nine for a moment. If that was six, seven, eight, nine, that digit has to be a one, two, three, or a four because it cannot be, it sees the whole of this entire Remban. So it could not be a six, seven, eight or nine. It can't be five because of the weird X-wingy pattern. So, ah, uh, 
this is going to be it. This is going to be it. This is what we have to do. We have to work out what this line is. If this if this is six, seven, eight, or nine, and this this three cell Remban line can't have five on it. Ah, 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 ah. right. Well, I'm going to change tack again. I'm going to come back to this one. Right, this Remban doesn't have five on it because remember there's a five in one of those three cells. So there's no five on here. So there's, and there's no one on here. So how could this be a low Remban? If this is a low, low Remban, it's got to have two, three and four on it. And that breaks the puzzle because you've got to put a, you've got to put a low digit. Remember the oscillating polarity principle. One of these is low, i.e. one, two, three or four. And if we put one, two, three, and four in those cells, we can't we can't put a low digit in that domino. So this is high, which means it's from six, seven, eight, and nine. Which means it's definitely got seven and eight on it, because it's either six, seven, eight. Oh, this is beautiful. I've got a digit, I think. Oh, well, no. I no, actually, I haven't. But I've nearly got a digit. I've nearly got a digit. Because. Yes, this is either 678, in which case the high digit I'm going to put in this domino, and there must be a high digit in a domino on a green line, is going to be a 9. Or it's 987 here, in which case the high digit I'm putting in the domino is a six. Now a six can only go with a one on a German whisper. It's the only digit that's five away. So, and I can't put one on this line because there's a one in this box. So this is, this line is six, seven, eight, which means this has a nine on it, which is actually not that great. So nine can go with any, any low digit. So this is six, seven, or eight. And now, I see, right. Now remember what we said about this line. We said this line was extreme in nature. So it's either six, seven, eight, nine, or it's one, two, three, four. Well, it's not six, seven, eight, nine anymore for a really rather beautiful reason. If this was six, seven, eight, nine, this is a nine by Sudoku, and this is a six, seven, eight triple. And that's going to mean six, seven, and eight in this box have to have to live within three of those four cells. But we know two of these cells are low because of the oscillating polarity, which doesn't work. <laughs> this is stunning, isn't it? So that means this line is not high, it's low. So that's one, two, three, and four, which means this cell is is our first digit, I think. I think it's a nine by Sudoku, <laughs> um, because it can't be one, two, three, or four. It can't be five because of the weird X-wing, and it can't be six, seven, and eight. There is our first digit. That is a nine. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh. Lizzie, this is beautiful. Now, I've got four low digits in this row. So what is the nature now of blue? Blue cannot be a high number. So blue along this Renban, and blue is the cold color, isn't it, is low. So they're one, two, three, and four, which means yellow, and yellow is the sunny color. Although I think people like me using orange for sun, sun. So maybe I'll switch to orange. Um, Orange has got to be the high colour. So six, seven, eight, nine. Now, can we do can we do any restrictions based off well where six can go? Six can't go here because that's going to cause double one. Six can't go here because that's going to cause double one. Six could go there. Um Hmm, okay. So maybe I can't quite go further than that. Ah, I see what I do now though. That can't be four. So forget about six, where does four go in this column? That can't be four because that would need to be flanked by double nine. 
this can't well let's keep going down this line I've just noticed that can't be four either because that's going to cause double nine there so let's get rid of four there let's get rid of four there that can't be four it's going to cause double nine that can't be four it's going to cause double nine so four there's a one two three triple here which means four is living in the same cells as five so that is a four five pair in column one. Ah, oh, no I thought I got a no I haven't I thought I got a quadruple here but I haven't I've got ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives into those four cells. So that's very interesting, but not perhaps interesting enough. So that's weird. So I, st I don't... Right, okay, but this is a one now, isn't it? Because in this column, the six must be in one of those cells. And whichever what even if this is a six that's still a one so that's always a one because because one of those is a six so that means these two squares down here are a two three pair you can't put a seven in the middle of a two three pair because if you do whichever one of these is three will not be five away from the seven um that can't be a one anymore so that can't be a six can we do any better probably um, ah here's something interesting as well those two cells right oscillating polarity means these two cells are the same they're either both high or they're both low well they're not both low because if these were both low, ones, twos, threes, or fours, that would be a quadruple on one, two, three, and four, and this would not have a low digit on it, but it must have a low digit in that domino. So those two are high, which means they are orange. This is blue for low. That's therefore two, three, or four. It can't be four because that would cause double nine again. <laughs> this is two or three. These are not six, therefore, so they're seven, eight, or nine, and therefore I've got a quadruple in this box out of nowhere and that's not a one I suppose uh, so there is a low digit and a high digit here so is that very useful probably the high oh um, that well here's something strange the high digit on this domino can't be a six because if it was a six it would have to have a one next to it and there can't be a one on this line so there is a seven eight or a nine in one of those two cells which makes a triple in the row which means six in the row is over here now if six was here it would have to have a one above it Hmm, might be possible. If six is on the ren band, then ooh, that's a, it's a very middly digit on the ren band, so it's probably uh, not impressively restricted. Six, seven, eight, nine. So these are from one, two, three, four, and five. But we don't know. I don't think I can lock any digit into this domino, unfortunately. Six, six, seven, and eight. So, right, so two of the high digits here, two of six, seven, and eight, are going to be hypothecated into either the red digits or the grey digits here. So only one of these digits goes in this domino. Um... I, can I put six into all of those cells? No. Ah, ah, right. Okay. Let's have a look at this two by two. If we examine each of these cells and ask whether six can go into it, I think we always get 
a negative answer. Because remember, 6 has to be flanked by double 1. So you can't, if you put 6 here, you get double 1 there. That breaks the rules of Sudoku. If you put 6 here, you get double 1 there. That breaks the rules of Sudoku. If you put 6 here, you get double 1 there. It breaks the rules of Sudoku. And 6 here, you get double 1 there. So I don't think we actually need this given one to conclude that 6 is not in those cells. And that means in this box, there is a 6 in one of those two cells. And that means, what about, ah, okay, so now let's try that same trick down here. That can't be 6, it would cause double 1. That can't be 6. Oh, that, that, oh, bobbins. Yeah, you can put 6 in both of these. That can be 6 with double 1 in those two cells. That would put a 1 here. And that can be 6 and put a 1 here. Okay, so although there's a 6 vertically in column 4, I think we've got 4 positions for 6 in box 8, and I'm not really prepared to pencil mark that. So, 7 and 8 are the high digits that are going either into red or grey in box 5. And in this column, 7 and 8 have to go down there. Ah! 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 No, hang on. So if 7 and 8 go down here, 6 and 9 go into the... This is strange. So if 7 and 8 go in here, in this column, 7 and 8 go down here, but I need two high digits into either grey or red down here. So they and they can't be seven and eight. So they're going to have to. There must be a six and a nine in there. So and we know the six can't go here. So the six is definitely in this domino. Which means there's definitely a six. Oh, bobbins doesn't do anything. That's just sort of confirming what we already knew, which is the six in row two is over there. So if this is a 6, oh, it would be really nice. If that's a 6, that would cause double 1 here. It caused 9 here, which would give us an 8 here. If that's a 6, that's a 9. That looks a bit less powerful. So... What on earth do we do now? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I have not got a Scooby-Doo. I'd love to know, actually, if I can... I know there's a 7 and an 8 down here, don't I? So if I could force this to be a 7 or an 8, then I would know the polarity of this German Whisper. Which would be very interesting. Have we got some way of doing this now? So I've got 7, 8 here, I've got 6, 9 here. So these cells have to be very low. They've got to be from 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. I'm just wondering if I... I can now see I can't have a 1 on this, on this Renban. Because that's going to cause 6 digits in this row to be from 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And that's too many. Wow, there's definitely... There's definitely some pressure. So I can't even put two on this Renban either. So there's no one and there's no two on this Renban. And there's no... Ah! And there's no fun... Ah! That, that's it, isn't it? Sorry, I feel like I'm, my brain's just seized up, but that feels massive. If you can't put, you can't put two on here, 
because then you go two, three, four, for example, and you've got we've got this same problem. I've got too many low digits in the bottom row. Well, I now know because I can't have one and two and I can't have five because of the weird X wing. This string of digits has to be from high numbers, which means it's got seven and eight. Oh, it's got seven and eight on it. This is so clever. Oh my goodness. Lizzie, that is so clever. I think this is the point. Once this, once we've established this is high, this is now either six, seven, and eight, or seven, eight, and nine, but it's got seven and eight on it. That's not seven or eight. And that means seven and eight in this box are definitely in those two squares. This is massive. It's massive. Because now the five that I know in this column happens in this column in those four cells is now here with its friend the six because I know there's a six in one of those squares so this is now and the great thing about this now of course is that this is a low digit and if that's a low digit we know the polarity of this whisper line which means that's a low digit and this is a high digit uh, I was about to say it can't be a six but actually it can be can't it because that can be double one That's magnificent. Oh, and I know, ah, oh, this is even more magnificent. That digit's a seven. So this is a quadruple, and the six in that quadruple is on the right-hand side, which means this is six, seven, eight. I don't believe it. That's just, this is so clever. That's nine out of absolutely nowhere. So that's not nine. That's eight by the power of Sudoku. It's a bit outrageous to make me do Sudoku in Sudoku puzzles, but there we are. Um... So that is now not eight. So this is very low. This is six or seven. That well, that that cannot sim it simply cannot be next to threes and fours. So this is a one-two pair. Ah, and this digit has to appear on this Renban. Well, where does it go? Oh, this is going to give me a one-two-three triple. Um, it, it goes there because it can't go in those cells, so it must go here on the Remban. Sorry, I thought I saw something else. When I typed in that 3-4, I thought I saw something disappearing down here. I was like, what is going on? But no, okay, so I've now got a 1-2 pair here, which means 2 is in one of those cells in, um, in this box. Right, and I've got a one, two, three, triple in box, in box four. I've definitely got three and four in this triple. There's definitely got three and four in it. That means there's no three or no four on this Remban. So this Remban has a two, <laughs> it's got a two on it. Because it hasn't got a 1 on it, it hasn't got a 3 or a 4 on it. So there is a 2 on this Remban. Which is actually not that helpful. So it's got 2, 7, 8, 9. But it definitely contains 2. So we can get rid of 2 from here. We can get rid of 2 from here. Oh, hang on. Oh, that's, I see. Oh, sorry, yes. Okay, so the fact that this Ren... This, let's just do this logic again, just to check we've... I've understood it correctly. So the first thing I said was that, yeah, this digit, which is a one or a two from this whisper, that's right, has to go here, which forces three and four into these squares, which means two is on here, which means two is not in here. This is, the, the way that this is sort of going backwards and forwards is just stunning to me. So that's now become a two, which means that's a three and that's a one by Sudoku. Now three can't be next to seven on a whisper, so that's a nine. We've got a six, seven pair at the top of the grid. And look, that can be six, believe it or not, because we can double one that, that whisper line. This is two, which means that's a one. Doesn't tell us about this, I don't think. Um, 
well, although there's a 134 triple at the top of the column, so that is a, in fact a 2. Which means there's a 2 over here. Ah, I'm going to, I want to sort of look at this now, because I've just noticed that can't be a 1, so that can't be a 6. But maybe, if that, right, yeah, okay, that can't be 7, look, because if that's a 7, that cell has to not be 1 or 2. Well, it has to be a 1 or a 2, but it can be neither, so in fact that's 8. Which means that's got to be 3, because it can't be 4, and that tells us that we've now got lowish digits on this ren ban right this is going uh, this is going amazingly now so now i've got this digit in this row is one th it's not one it's three four or five oh i tell you i tell you something as well getting these digits as two seven eight has told us that the five in this box is horizontal. And that means that cell's a four. And if that cell's a four, that cell's a five, which means there's no five here. Yeah, which we could have seen once we got the five as being in these squares. So I'm, I've been slow about that, apologies. Right. Now this can't be six because this is two. So that is seven, which means that's seven and that's eight. which means this is now no longer seven. That's no longer four. So these are three, five and six into these squares. Those two squares have to be a three, four pair look, just looking at this row. So now I still haven't worked out how this, this um, red and gray line work in terms of its polarities. But I do now know that these digits are one, two, seven and eight. And I know there's no one in those digits. So there's definitely a two. Because one of these has got to be low, it must be a two, which means there's no two down here. Oh, I'm sure this is somehow resolved. I just can't see how to do it. Um, this is a three or a four. That's on a Ren band look. So that cell's got to be two, three, four or five. That cell can't be three. Um, now I'm getting stuck. How are we going to do this? I don't know. That's a six, seven pair. So that's not seven. So this is an eight, nine. Ah, that's an eight, nine pair. So this has become a two, seven pair. So that must do something for us. So these squares are from three, four, five, and six, and that's not a three. Do I know which one of these is the six? If it's that, that's a one. Is that still possible? That would put a one here. Maybe those squares can't include a four. I've got a four in the corner. Oh, hang on. And we're saying there's a five in here, aren't we? So that seems to have to be three. Oh, that's good. Okay, sorry. It's just basic Sudoku that I'm not doing. Won't surprise any of you. Um, Okie dokie. And now we will say that. Three here means that's not a three. So the, so the, uh, we already knew the high digit here was a nine, apparently from our pencil marks. The low digit is a two or a four, which is not going to help us. Um, can that, if that's a high digit, it has to be a nine because it can't be a six, seven or eight. But it can maybe be a nine. Hmm. Okay, so there must be something else we can do here to sort of slightly, or maybe it's this Remban. Can I do something with this Remban? This Remban has three on it. So it could be three, four, five, or it could be three, one, two, or it could be two, three, four. 
So if that's a two, this is a one or a four. No, that's it's still it's still resisting, isn't it? It's just resisting a little bit. There's got to be a three in this domino. So if this was a three, this would have to be an eight and this would have to be a nine. I'm desperately looking at why that fails and I can't see why that fails. If this was a three, this has to be an eight. Ah, so I see. So because we can't have seven above a three, because it's not five away from it, there must be an eight in one of those two cells. Therefore, there is no seven in those two cells. Therefore, this has become a one eight pair, which means this has become a two seven pair, which means we can place seven by Sudoku in this box. And these squares have got to be from four, six, and eight. Let's just put that in and see if we can see how to resolve it. That can't be eight anymore. So this is four or six. There's got to be a two in one of those three cells. It still resists. It's still not. It's still not telling me its secrets, is it? Five, six here means that's not six. Hang on, this must be. So I've got two, four. No, this is done. This nine at the bottom is what I'm not seeing, is it? Nine here, eight here, four here, six here, eight here. Aha, six, five. This is better. Keep going now. So these are a two, three pair up here, which must mean those are a four, five pair. I'm desperately looking to see how that resolves itself, but it doesn't seem to. Right, but now that digit is 2, 4 or 9. It's not 9 because I, I need a high digit in this domino. So that's become 2 or 4. And these two digits are 3 and 5. No, it's still not telling me how it works. Okay. Right, now I feel like I'm just sort of, I'm sort of beating around the bush. I'm not getting, I'm not quite spotting what Lizzie's hidden in the puzzle at this point for me. I, I promise you I'm looking. That can't be five, it's on a whisper. So that's three, four, ah. Okay, so there's a five on this Renban. That's something I should have picked up upon. But there could be a three. If if this was three, five, and that was four, is, does that break the world in any manner? Don't think so. Right, what about this digit then? Ah, okay. If this digit is if this digit is six, that has to be a one in the corner. That's forced. If this is three or four, this still has to be high then. So that's what this digit is one, eight, or nine. And it can't be. I think it could be any of those. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, hang on. Is this six in one of those two cells a real pencil mark? I don't think I believe that. Oh, no, it is. Yeah. OK, so I, what I should have done when I pencil mark six into one of those squares, that causes nine to be in the opposite color, doesn't it? So if that was six, this is high and has to be nine. And if that's six, that has to be nine. So you can't have nine in either of those cells. So there's definitely a nine in one of those two squares, which means there's definitely a nine in one of these two squares. No, that's that's not triggered it still. So the whole trick here. I think is going to be for me somehow to work out the coloration of this line. This is what we've got to get to. So the options for this, if it's low, it can't be one or three. So it's two or four. If it's high, it has to be nine. So it's two, four or nine. 
can... Ah, it can't be 4 now, because this can't be 9. Aha! So it's now 2 or 9. Now, if it's 9, this square has to be 3 or 4. It would actually have to be 4, wouldn't it? So we get 9 here, 9 and 9 here. I can't see what's wrong with that. There might be something. If this is 2, on the other hand, this has to be high and it can't be 7 or 8. So it's got to be 6. Oh, hang on, that's it. This can't... That's it. Right. This is what I've missed. This is what I've missed. If this is 2, this digit here has to be 7, 8 or 9 because it can't be 6. And we know that the 6 in this domino is on the right hand side. It is the high digit in one of these two squares. So this simply cannot be 2. That has to be 9, which means this digit has to be a 4 which means that digit's the 6, and now we get the 9 here, and you can see now we're greyifying the line with, with the high digit. So that's got to be 8, that's got to be 7, that's got to be 9. Um, that doesn't prevent this from being 2. That's now 2. This is now 1. That digit has to be 3. That's a 6, that's a 5. Aha, right. Now, now I'm feeling better about the world. Ah, that's a 2-4 pair here, which gives me a 2-4 pair here, which means that's not a 4. That's not an 8. So these squares are a 1-5 pair. That must resolve this, doesn't it? If that's... Ah, <laughs> no! Oh, dear! If this is 1, that can be 2 and make a valid Remban. If that's 5, that can be 4 and make a va ra valid Remban. That's weird. That's really weird. Okay, but maybe I can do more with Sudoku in the central column. So that's one, that's five, that's four, that's three. Yeah, that does something to this digit. Look, that can't be three anymore. It'd be double three on the round band. It can't be five. I've got another two, four pair. So that digit can't be four. Um... Can we do any better than that? Perhaps in, uh, maybe there's something going on in that row. The two here gives me the two and the seven. Let's take advantage of that. And let's think about those two squares. They are an eight, nine pair now, which means these two squares are a five, six pair. It's still, it's still resisting, I think. Um, oh, where does nine go in this box? 9 doesn't go in that corner anymore. If 9 goes here, then we need to put 8 on the Remban, and we can't. So that's the 9, which gives us a 9 here and an 8 here. That means that... Can we put 8 here? No, because then we need to put 7 on the line, and we couldn't. So 8 is in one of two places. Um, and this column, those digits, we need five, this is five, this is a five, six, or seven. Now, what can we rule out? This can't be three anymore, because I don't seem to be able to put four on the line. Oh, this is it. Right, look at this. So if this can't be three, and it can't be, because I don't seem to be able to put four on the line up here, because of this two, four pair, that seems to create a 5-6 pair, which forces this to be a 7. And that means I get 7 and 6 in the first row. Look, and that gets 6 and 5 over here, and 5 and 4 over here. And that must mean something very important, which is that. That cell's not 6, because of the 5-6 pair. So this is, oh, I see, so now this is a low digit, which means that's high, and that's 8 in the corner which gives us an 8 on the Renban, which gives us more joy in terms of this square. This is a 1, 2, or a 3 now. And this square is a 1, 2, 3, or 4. Oh, 8 can't be next to 4, can it, on a, on a German Whisper? So that fixes that those two digits. The 3 gives us the 3 and the 5. And I think, finally, I've understood... Oh, look, that's become a 1. 
So that needs a 2 with it on the Renban, which gives us a 2 there, a 4 there. This column has 7, gives us the 6, the 7, the 7, the 6. Now this square is a 5, so that needs to be a 6 to make the world add up to the right number. That's now a 2, which gives us 2 and 3 and 3 and 1. 1 here, 4 here. What a brilliant puzzle that is. That's stunning. I mean, I was very slow on the last bit because I didn't appreciate the power of this line the way I should have done and this digit. But the stuff before that is just it's extraordinarily clever. I absolutely loved. I loved the start with just working out this weird X-wing on fives. And then I loved how this line worked with, uh, was it that line? Yes, that had to be high. And then there was something with eights and sevens that went on at the bottom. I think it was this line that, that did something to that. I think it was that cell that was gorgeous. This has been put together with so much cunning, wit, cleverness. It's brilliant. It is brilliant. The pipe has been smoked. <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie, for sending that in. Uh, thanks very much for watching the video. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.